What's going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today we have a little bit of a different kind of video today. We're going to be talking about a couple of investing mistakes that I think you guys need to avoid or at least be knowledgeable about, cognizant about, so hopefully you don't make mis some of these mistakes going forward. I will also, of course, uh, preface, preface this by saying that no one is perfect and along this journey, you're going to make some mistakes and some things that might seem like great ideas in the moment, they might turn out to be mistakes and just because something doesn't work out doesn't necessarily mean that you're an idiot or you made a huge mistake. Um, you know, sometimes you could have made the right decision and it just doesn't play out correctly. You know, there's always uh, odds and probabilities and all that stuff and, and whatever happens doesn't mean that that was necessarily the most likely or least likely or whatever thing to happen. Uh, but in this video, uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about the big YouTuber Fano and some pretty public mistakes uh, that he has made and uh, I'll be going over some of the mistakes that I've made as well and hopefully this will be just a big learning experience for all of us. Like I said, these are things that I don't want you guys to do in the future and things that I want to prevent myself from possibly doing in the future as well. Uh, but of course, first, I just wanted to mention... Uh, uh, my cash trading business that I have been going for a couple of weeks now. We've gotten a ton of cash trades done. I've honestly been really, really surprised and overwhelmed by uh, the amount of people interested in selling uh, their CSGO skins and items for cash and, and turning your uh, items that are oftentimes hard or scary, you know, you don't want to get scammed, all these things, um, turn them into cash through me safely, effectively, and efficiently. Uh, again, I have plenty of funds to be buying all different kinds of items. I've bought cheap items. I've bought expensive items. I've bought uh, stuff that's a little bit more illiquid. I've bought, you know, play skins for as low as like $5 and agent skins for, I think, I think about a $2 agent the other day. Um, so anything you guys have, if you want to turn it into cash, uh, I'm interested in buying for the right price. It's obviously a great way to help support me and my channel and my content as well, but hopefully it's providing a nice service to you guys too. Uh, but yeah, so hit me up on Twitter, Twitter's linked in the description below. We can uh, talk, but Let's get into this. So Nalo, the YouTuber tweeted the other day, or this was yesterday, I guess, but it depends when this video's come out, but the day I'm recording this, he tweeted this yesterday. He said, buy high, sell low. And these are screenshots from Fano's Discord where he posts, um, you know, everything, everything, who knows, it's impossible to know if it is everything, but he says he posts his buy and sell orders, everything he's buying, everything he's selling to his, um, you know, like Patreon and YouTube members and all that stuff, you know, behind a paywall which that's its whole, whole other thing. We'll talk about that maybe in the future, whatever. Don't really care to talk about it today. But this is what he posted January 10th, January 9th, somewhere in there that he bought a thousand snake bite cases. He bought 500 fracture cases and then he bought a thousand more snake bite cases. Um, you know, so he spent a, a decent chunk of money. Now, obviously his portfolio, you know, when I saw it a couple of months ago, it was around hundred thousand dollars. So this isn't an insane investment. It's not like he was going all in. It's not like he was loading a ton of money into it, anything like that, but a meaningful amount of money, not, you know, $2 or nothing like that. Uh, it, this was around the time that the cases changed, you know, cases got updated from, uh, dropping when whatever they were before, just kind of randomly once a week, twice a week, uh, from just playing the game or idling or whatever to now you actually have to level up to get cases. Uh, and obviously a lot of people thought, Hey, cases are going to be dropping way less often case prices are going to spike and in the short term case prices did spike but obviously the snake bite and fracture cases uh obviously obviously looking back on this now the cases that are still in the active duty pool even though they're getting dropped less frequently they're still getting dropped the volumes are still going up they're still incredibly common yeah they might increase over time a little bit but uh the main point here is that there was a ton of hype. There's a ton of speculation. People were going crazy that day because this new update came out. And that's really mistake number one. Uh, and I will say here that I was part of this mistake. I bought some fracture cases on this day. Um, I think my cost basis was even worse. I might even have bought them the day after. I might not have been home or I might not have had some money on or whatever, but I didn't buy very many. I think overall I spent $10 on fracture cases or $12, whatever. This is all the fracture cases I own right here, but I did buy them this same day or even the day after that Fano bought them. Um, partly because at this time, this was in June, you know, I started my YouTube channel, I think in May, uh, and I started CS investing in May. So at this time I'm only a month in and I know nothing about cases. I have looked into cases zero. I've researched them zero. All of my time and effort uh, pre parasail had gone into skins. I was trying to learn about AKs and ops and M4s and all the important skins and what skins had what great returns and all that stuff. And then once a parasail started, I was all about stickers and I was really doing a bunch of research and spreadsheets and looking at returns of stickers and all this stuff. I hadn't got to cases yet. I didn't know anything about cases. And also at this time, I was trying to learn from a ton of different YouTubers, from a ton of different people, from all the different sources on the internet. And Fano, being one of the biggest in the space, I was really into Fano's content. I was watching all of his live streams. I was actually a YouTube channel member of Fano at this time, which is hilarious looking back on it. 
But at this time, Fano was talking about how he was going to be buying cases and how this new case update was going to make even these active duty cases really go crazy. And, and I bought into it. And I think that's mistake number two is don't blindly buy stuff because YouTubers or Twitter or Reddit or whatever tells you to do it. That doesn't make sense. You need to actually do the research on your own and you actually need to believe in the stuff your own. So I made two big mistakes here. I bought into crazy, ridiculous hype that I didn't really even have a chance to process if it even made sense. And looking back on it, it made a no sense um, because there's just so many better cases to buy than uh, the fracture cases I ended up buying. But I had like $10 on Steam uh, and either way, $10 wasn't going to make or break anything for me. But I was like, eh, you know, whatever. I if I can turn this $10 into $20 or something, hey, that'd be cool. And, and I, I didn't want to sit out. I had a ton of FOMO. I was like, these cases are going crazy. I want to have at least some skin in the game. Um, but that was a big mistake. But obviously, again, this was a month into my investing journey. And a guy like Fano, who you know claims to be this really high-level investor who's been around for three, four, five, six, ten 10 years, however long he's been around, him making these mistakes, I think, is a little bit more embarrassing and a lot more problematic. Because if I'm still making these same mistakes five years from now, I have a big problem. And I hope you guys are calling me out. And I hope, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I would deserve hate and stuff at that point. I mean, obviously, no one deserves like personal hate or anything like that. But as an investor, this is a big red flag. This is an absolute disaster. But we get to the next kind of thing here, which is the fact that yesterday, he, or I guess it was August 24th, a couple days ago, he ended up selling a ton of these at a pretty significant loss. Again, he was buying snake bites at 54 cents. He ends up selling 2,000, I guess all 2,000 of them at 29 cents. And Fracture, he was buying at 60, uh, Fracture, he was buying at 74 cents. Uh, and he ended up selling them at 53 cents. So, pretty significant losses. And you know, what's going on here? This is a very, very short time frame. This is two months that he, you know, kind of changed his mind and took a really, really big loss. Now, I don't think selling at a loss is necessarily a huge issue. I know there's a ton of other people that will say, oh, well, you should just hold because they're going to go up eventually. But I don't think those people are factoring in opportunity costs. Um, I know, yes, you want to make money on each specific item, but like, who cares if you sell this at a loss and you buy something else that's going to give you better returns going forward? Like, as long as your money is constantly in the best place possible, I don't think you should worry about if your specific item got sold at a loss or a gain or whatever. But again, the biggest red flag for me here is not that he sold these at a loss. It's that he changed his whole strategy in just two months in just a short amount of time. Now, hey, if he reevaluated or realized he made a big stupid mistake or whatever, yeah, it doesn't make sense to ride this mistake even further down. Or hey, if he thinks Paris or Antwerp or Stockholm or whatever is going to outperform these cases from this point today going forward in the future, then yeah, he should sell and buy whatever's the best. But uh, you know, you do obviously have to factor in things like fees and, and stuff like that. So I don't generally you know recommend or advocate for constant buying or selling or anything like that. But uh, again, for somebody who's been around as long as him uh, and somebody with as big of a portfolio as him, him uh, taking such a significant loss in such a short amount of time and also buying and selling something at a loss in such a short amount of time. You know, if you want to buy and sell something at a gain in a short amount of time because it reached your price targets or you, you're just happy with that gains, you want to lock in some profits or whatever, that's one thing. But if you FOMO'd into something and then panic sold out of it two months later when it probably makes more sense to hold at these prices now than it did to buy at those prices back then, you know, that would maybe make a little bit more sense. So I think this is another big investing mistake. And what's also kind of interesting is that that's not the first time that Fano has done this. If you look at his channel, you know, I've watched a lot of these videos, obviously. He has this video about Antwerp Legends capsules, um, you know, seven months ago, how he says he's not selling his capsules. He's holding on to his Antwerp Legends. You know, this is going into Paris and all this different stuff, and uh, he's going to hold them for the long run, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, you know, a couple of months later, uh, three months later, or four months later, I guess he says, why I sold my capsules. So he's constantly kind of playing both sides of a lot of things. And lately, it seems like he's maybe getting more stuff wrong than right. Uh, also, another reason why I kind of, you know, don't really watch Fando's videos anymore and, and uh didn't, I'm not a channel member anymore, not in the Discord and stuff, is he oftentimes says both things. Like if you watch one live stream and the next live stream, he'll like literally contradict himself from stream to stream. He's made a lot of bad choices. And again, I just think he's making some really elementary level mistakes for somebody who's been in the market this long. Again, this isn't like a fan of hate video or anything like that, but it is like, a, hey, this guy's clearly making some really, really big mistakes that people probably shouldn't make. And I think you guys should learn from them. So again, don't FOMO, 
don't buy into crazy hype. If you're going to invest in stuff, have it make sense to you and make sure there's some, some rational decision making there. Don't buy stuff just because other people uh, are buying it or just because some YouTuber or some random guy um, you know, tells you to. Uh, you need to actually believe in the investments you're making or it's never going to work out. And that's what I found out in this case. Yeah, you know, I'm down like 20, 25 percent on those cases I bought. Yeah, it's twelve dollars going to nine dollars. So I'm not I don't really care. I'm glad I didn't spend, you know, thousands of dollars or something like that. Uh, and when I do spend thousands of dollars, it's because I believe in something a lot more than than this case. Um, but yeah, just be careful. Have a game plan. You really shouldn't be buying and selling out of stuff in, in one month, two month time periods. Uh, you shouldn't be saying, hey, I'm holding. These are great. These are amazing. And then uh, a couple of months later, selling out of everything. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Fano has kind of done this stuff a couple of different times now. Uh, and like I said, I just want you guys to learn from it. I'm not saying go shit on Fano. I'm just saying you guys don't do this going forward in the future. Be better than this um, because we're all capable of being better than this. But pretty much it was video today, guys. Hopefully I catch you in the next one. But until then. Peace.